Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing transposition! Now sometimes this is called rearranging equations and it's actually very similar to solving equations. So before you watch this, make sure you know how to solve equations. I've done a series of videos on how you do that. But transposition is very useful in science. You're rearranging equations, which saves you a lot of time in the long run. I'm going to show you why we transpose equations in this video. And then I've done a series of videos on the sort of step-by-step -step of how you actually do the transposition in practice. It follows along the same lines as the solving equations video, because at the end of the day, when you're transposing equations or rearranging equations, you are solving equations. It's just that a lot of the numbers have been changed into letters. So it looks very strange, but actually if you can solve equations, you can already do transposition. It's the same thing. There isn't any difference. It just looks different. Let me give you an example. And as I say, I'll try and explain what transposition is and why we do it. So uh, you should be familiar, hopefully, with the uh, equation speed is distance over time. So if I say S is speed, D for distance and T for time, we could write the equation like this. Yeah, the speed is the distance divided by the time. So if you have some kind of object traveling a certain distance over a certain time, then you can work out the speed. So if it's a car traveling on a road, for example, if you know how far the car's traveled and how long it's been traveling for, then you can work out the speed. Great. But what if you didn't want to know the speed? What if you already know the speed and you're trying to find out the distance, let's say? So imagine you're in your car, driving along a road, and you're driving for a certain amount of time, let's say you're driving for an hour, at a particular speed, and you want to know, how far have I gone? Well, we can do it using this equation. So as an example, let's say we were traveling at 60 miles per hour. So I'll put that there. We don't know what the distance is, that's what we're trying to find out. And the time, imagine we were traveling for two hours. And we want to know how far have we traveled? We've been going for 60 miles an hour for two hours. How far is that? Well, we can solve the equation. Yeah, just like when we were solving equations, we're trying to find out what the unknown number is here. D represents an unknown number, the distance we've traveled. So if we solve the equation, so I'm going to multiply by the two, multiply on both sides, that will get rid of our fraction. I'll just swap it around as well to make it easier to read. So the distance is going to be the 60 times by the two. When we multiply by the bottom, it's going to multiply here. So it'll be times by two, which means our distance is going to be 120, 120 miles. So if we travel for 60 miles for two hours, then we will have traveled 120 miles. Well, that's fine. But when you do science, usually, it's not enough to do an experiment once. If you want to test to find out something, then you have to repeat the experiment a bunch of times. So imagine, for example, you've got a dice. And you're not sure if it's a fair dice or if it's a loaded dice. You suspect that it's more likely to roll a six. It's a dodgy dice. Now, it's not enough to take that dice and just roll it once. You might get a six and you might think, ah, yes, I think it's dodgy. But you could have just been lucky. It might have been a perfectly fair, normal dice. And when you rolled it, you were just lucky and happened to get a six. So if you want to find out if it really is a dodgy dice, if it's loaded, as we say, then you'd have to roll it a whole ton of times. Maybe you roll the dice a hundred times or something. And if you find when you roll the dice a hundred times, you get a six half the time, then that'd be pretty strong evidence that it's a loaded dice. The point is you can't just do an experiment once. So for any kind of science, when you do experiments, you always repeat the experiments. Because if you just do it once, you may have got lucky and you can't just draw conclusions from one experiment. So if you're measuring some kind of distance and you're traveling, then you might do this journey a bunch of times at different speeds, which would take different times. And then you work out the distance each time and then you can compare them. And if they're all roughly the same, you can take an average and work out what the distance is. So just to sort of extend this example a little bit. So imagine we were traveling the same journey between two points, but this time instead of traveling 60 miles per hour, imagine we were traveling at 30 miles per hour. We want to find out what the distance is again. And this time, instead of taking two hours, the journey took four hours. So again, we could solve the equation. So if I multiply both sides by four this time to get the D by itself, I'll swap the sides as well so we can see what D is. So D would be 30 this time times by the four 
30 times 4 is 120. So again, this is pretty strong evidence now. I've done the journey twice. I found the same distance both times. And obviously I could do this a whole bunch of times. But getting different speeds and different times, shoving them in this, in this equation, and then solving them again and again and again, is going to get very repetitive. And if you look at the solving equation, it's actually the same. No matter what numbers I shove in for the speed and the time, I'm going to get the same equation both times with exactly the same solution. I mean, the answers might vary a little bit, depending on if I took a slightly circuitous route or something. But in terms of the method for solving the equation, I'm always multiplied by this bit on the bottom, which is always going to then give me the distance. Wouldn't it be great if I could solve the equation before putting the numbers in and then just keep shoving the numbers in every time? I wouldn't then have to solve the equation every time. Now somebody has worked out how to do that and that is called transposition. It's where you solve the equation before putting the numbers in and it saves a lot of time because if you're repeating experiments in science you don't want to have to solve the equation again and again and again especially when the solution is actually the same every time. You could just solve it once and for all at the start and then put all the numbers in. Let me show you. So if we go back to our original speed is distance over time equation, I could solve the equation like this. I want to get the d by itself. I don't know what the s and the t are, but they're just going to be numbers that I'm going to get from my experiment. So I do the same thing. I want the distance by itself. I'm going to times both sides by the time. And if I flip it around again, the distance will be the speed times the time. So I've rearranged the equation to get the distance by itself. Now when I do my experiment, if the speed was 60 miles an hour and the time was 2 hours, I can just do 60 times 2 is 120. If the speed was 30 and the time was 4, 30 times 4 is 120. And I can just keep shoving the numbers in each time without having to go through the solving the equation bit each time. So it saves a lot of time. Now, this is a bit of a daft example. This is a very easy one and the rearranging here is very easy as well and hardly takes any time. So you could almost just do that in your head, but they get a lot harder. But the point is that if you start with some equation, it's possible to solve the equation beforehand, which, as I say, in real life can take quite a few steps and can get a lot more complicated. And then once you've solved the equation, then you just keep shoving all the numbers in your results from your experiment. And then you don't have to solve the equation again and again and again every time. All right, so that's what transposition is. You can see that it's very much like solving equations. So if you go and watch the transposition, transposition 1 video and transposition 2 video, etc., I've done a series on how you do the transposition, the step by step, and it gradually gets harder as you go along. So go and watch that one next. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.